Round two, trying to find the side of Joshua Tree. I'm pretty sure this is the last loop. <laughs> this is it. There's a there's like a Airstream Club um, going on. There's like I don't know what 10, 15, 20 Airstreams there's here, or something lot. like that. So a, um, a lot of sites are taken with Airstreams, but uh, man, we can get into these two. So we're, it looks like we're gonna have to take two sites. Uh, we talked to some of the other people here and said that some of them were having to do that. So. 99 and uh 100 i think we can do it wedge this bad boy in here <laughs> this is incredible though look at this yeah. look at our backyard wow this is very very tight <laughs> like over 30 feet i saw one person with like a 35 foot fifth wheel and that guy has you know what of steel <laughs> he's just he's very gutsy but other than that i don't think i've seen anything over 30 feet we're technically 31 but but very tight it's really here. yeah squeezing in here yeah for sure. it is um all right let me see if i can i don't know we'll see what happens <laughs> we made it to joshua tree hensley oh we're at the rocks we're at the rocks we can climb them. well we're gonna climb them climb some rocks and you grab my hand daddy oh i will and i'm a rock climber so we've made it to our boondocking spot here in Joshua Tree National Park with no hookups whatsoever. But just five hours ago, we had water, electric, and sewer at the RV park we were at. At a typical RV park, you're not going to see too much wildlife. Um, we do see ducks here, <laughs> but that's about it. And there's definitely wildlife at boondocking sites. Totally depends on the area, but you get wildlife that's like natural to the area. It's really cool, some of the stuff we've seen. Look at that rabbit, Hensley. See the rabbit? I grab him. No, we're not going to grab that rabbit. <laughs> no, we're not feeding him rocks, and we're not throwing rocks at him. In an RV park, it can get noisy. As far as noise, when you're boondocking somewhere like Joshua Tree, not a lot out here. So this can vary a lot from RV to park to RV park, but uh, some of these you got quite a few amenities. There's like a store over here, gathering place over here where they have games. Of course, a playground, which is Hensley's favorite. Basketball court, swimming pool, uh, there's horseshoes. Amenities when you're boondocking, um, not much of anything here. <laughs> so the amenities here uh, for this boondocking spot are gonna be like riding our bike, uh, going for a hike, just exploring, just sitting out enjoying nature. Those are your fingers. Is that going to be our entertainment? Finger pretzel. So that's our amenity. That's our entertainment. Pretzel fingers. Was that your idea, Marissa? No, she she come and showed me. How many times have I filmed you through this screen? It's becoming more frequent. The good thing is, if you get hungry, you can just take a bite, right? There you go. <laughs> Most of the time when you're in an RV park, you've got decent cell service. Sometimes you even get Wi-Fi, but not usually. <laughs> yeah, when you're boondocking, it's hit or miss on the internet and cell signal. Um, we have no service at all here. At most RV parks, you've got these big spacious lots you can pull into. Sometimes there's even like pull through spaces. You've got something 40 feet or over. Most of the time, it's not that big of an issue to get in your spot. So sites when you're boondocking can be totally hit or miss. Uh, we have been places where you can get 40 footers into it, but we've been places where we couldn't even fit ourselves. At an RV park, there's usually a laundromat close by, or sometimes there's even a laundry in the RV park, and you can just walk there and drop off your clothes. As far as laundry when you're boondocking, we do have our combo washer dryer unit that we can use, but you know, we're trying to watch our water and our resources. At a lot of RV parks, you've got a bathhouse. So you've got, you got showers and toilets and sinks. It's almost like having a second bathroom. So it's really nice to have that as a perk. And plus in a lot of RV parks, it's not that far. I mean, our RV is right there. Bathhouse here at Joshua Tree. Yeah, I don't think there's anything like that here.
So it's only 15 bucks a night to stay here, but we had to reserve two campsites, so it's gonna be 30 for us. Usually way cheaper to boondock. At an RV park, we've got plenty of power. We don't have to worry about whether or not the sun's shining, if it's cloudy, if it's raining, just less power management overall. So water, electric, sewer when we're boondocking, that's a little bit different. We do have to be <laughs> more careful what we use, what we consume. And so sometimes when you boondock national parks, there's like places to fill up with water, places to dump. I don't think there's much of any of that here. At an RV park, you've got dozens and sometimes hundreds of other RVers. And so it's pretty easy to connect with people if you want to find more people that have things in common with you. Or if you've got a family and you're looking for kids, it's not usually that difficult to run into a family. Meeting people while boondocking, this is probably larger than normal national park or like boondocking campground. I know there's over a hundred. There's quite a few in this one. Um, so we could meet people if we wanted to, but it's still different because I mean, this is part of what we like too, because when you boondock a lot of the times, you're surrounded by this brush instead of like physically seeing the RVs next to you. When people walked by our RV in the RV park, they could just see us outside or hang out with us or interact with us, whereas you just got way more privacy here. Most of your RV parks are gonna be closer to uh, cities, so we can make like a super target in like 15 minutes from here. Oh, Hensley, that is perfect. Oh, raspberry fingers. <laughs> <laughs> like what often happens with boondocking, we're not really close to a city because we're in the middle of a national park and sometimes it could take you like an hour, two hours just to get out of a national park. It's been like three plus hours to get to a Walmart sometimes. So we're about 45 minutes from Walmart from here and then who knows where a super target is. I'm guessing like an hour and a half, two hours away, something like that. At an RV park, it's a little bit easier to regulate temperature. If it gets too hot, it gets too cold, we've got the option of our ACs or our heaters. When you're boondocking, we can't control the temperature quite as much, um, but we do have our generator like in extreme situations we could still crank the ac with the generator if we needed to and of course we do have solar and so it's not like we don't have power at all we just can't like regulate the temperature nearly as well as if we had full hookups took us two tries but we got in here didn't we i don't know who uh tries twice to stay somewhere with no hookups but uh we love it it's a challenge i can see how people would enjoy it as a challenge but I think it's more about the places you get to stay than it is the actual boondocking experience. But I think it's totally worth it for sure to get places like this in exchange for some hookups. Two totally different spots we've been in and they both offer something beneficial. So it's good to mix it up. We like to mix it up and that keeps us going. Yeah, that's kind of the third option I've been comparing between the two. Really what we do is in between those two. Um, we'll um, pretty much boondock when there's somewhere really cool to boondock or boondock until we just can't boondock anymore. <laughs> and, we and then we'll break. get some full hookups and take a break. I know we, with your sister, we went, what, a month straight or something we like that, did. boondocking. The poor but girl we never from, got full hookups. We went from <laughs> Yellowstone to Grand Tetons yeah. and so it was just two really awesome places. But yeah, she probably Yeah, thinks, and it was some beautiful boondocking. She um, probably thinks we're pretty Yeah, extreme. I don't know if she'll be back or not, but. <laughs> Hensley's convinced this is her mail. Hensley, I don't think there's any mailboxes out here. This is cool out here, isn't it, Hensley? Isn't this neat? Well, let's go climb. Yeah, we'll climb. You wanna climb something? This is our playground now. You made it. You made it. In a dress. So if you're thinking about RVing, um, I think this is a big deal, knowing whether or not the RV park lifestyle is for you, or if the boondocking lifestyle is for you, or a combination of both. So if you can find out a way, I don't know if you go with someone, or rent an RV, or what. Because that was kind of what we struggled with. We um, thought, we knew we were gonna be big, we knew we wouldn't fit into a lot of this stuff, but thought we'll park outside, we'll drive in, we're okay with the RV park thing. And then we just, over time, decided, you know what? We want more of the boondocking. And thing. it took us a while to get there. Yeah. yeah. We were not like boondocking our first week on the road. Like it our took first us year. <laughs> it took us a while to get comfortable. We're like slipping while we're. <laughs> it took us a while to get comfortable and figure out how to do it. And uh -huh. um, we're not experts, but we've gotten better over time. Mm -hmm. I think it's just one of those. It takes practice, and so we're getting there. She's loving this. That. Yeah. Look at that one. Where, where do you want to go? Uh, this way. All right, we can go this way. Hi. Come on. This is why we wanted to stay in the park and why we left the first time and decided we'd come back and try again for a spot. Because it's a good decision. We like, wanted to camp in this. Look at this. I mean, it's spectacular. This is our backyard, so that's really cool. The sun's setting. We're gonna finish our hike, and uh, we're looking forward to Joshua Tree. Catch you guys later. <laughs> Catch you guys later. Oh, <laughs> drone off.